Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for tonight's meeting of the Environment and Climate Caucus of the Washington State Democratic Party. This is our endorsement meeting. We have um, about 40 candidates lined up to speak this evening. And um, our first order of business is going to be to approve the agenda. Let me get the agenda up here on the screen. And um, while I'm doing that, uh, if you, whoops, that's not the right one. Um, well, I'm messing with this. If you could please um, uh, open your participant tab because we're gonna be doing a little bit of voting and um, also open your chat window. That's the same wrong one again. Steve, I put the links in the top of that spreadsheet. Okay. ECC. Oh, I see what the problem is. Sorry, folks. Okay, here's the agenda. Okay, so um, uh, let's use the chat for motions and seconds. I'm looking for a motion to uh, adopt the agenda and a second. And we'll do voting through that participant tab. If you look at the bottom of the participant tab, okay, we have a motion and a second. If you look at the bottom of the participant chat tab, just click where it says participants and you'll see a yes or a no button at the bottom of that window. If you could click yes or no, if you're a member, we'll go on the honor system here. We have one no vote so far. Maybe it's because you can't actually see the entire agenda. Okay, I'm gonna call that uh, adopted. Um, I will paste in the chat window a link to the agenda or have you already done that somewhere, Justin? I can do that. Can. Okay, um, looking at the agenda here uh, next, we need to approve the minutes from our July 16th meeting. So let's switch over to that window. And um, here they are. Okay, you should see the minutes. Let me know if you don't. And I'm going to try to scroll kind of slowly. If that bothers you, you might want to Close your eyes periodically. Steve, uh, you've already got a motion to approve and second in the chat. Okay. Good deal. Anybody have any questions? Okay, let's do that voting thing again. Okay, minutes are adopted. Um, back to the agenda. The agenda says, uh, first up, our officers' reports, starting with the chair, that's me. Um, a couple of things, and I'm going to keep this really brief because we do have uh, uh, a big meeting going on here. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Justin Baird, who has uh, put, the, put the scheduling um, together and communicated with all of the candidates. And uh, I want to mention that we have previously endorsed four candidates uh, during the primary. We endorsed Hillary Franz for DNR director, Deborah Lekanoff for the 40th LD legislature, Liz Lovelett for 40th LD senator. And uh, I want to give a special shout out to Angie Homala in um, the tenth. She's running for Senate. She is a founding member of this organization. And uh, she's in a tight race. We're uh, really excited for her and, um, and proud. Uh, so with that, over to John uh, for renewals and finances. Good evening, my name is John Stafford. I'm the treasurer for the uh, ECC. Uh, the financial situation of the organization is good. Uh, I will be brief and just make four points. 
Um, first, uh, it's required each year for the ECC to file an annual report uh, to update its status with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, I completed that uh, this summer, so we are current with the Secretary of State. Uh, second, uh, the balance for the ECC, our bank balance is $2,650.92. Um, and in my judgment, uh, that represents a reasonably strong, uh, sound position for the organization. Uh, certainly, we like to build that over time, but we are a very low cost organization. Uh, all people that uh, work for the organization, of course, do so for free. And our only recurring expense um, is a $16.50 uh, monthly Zoom charge. Um, and we periodically have other very minor expenses, but we are a very low cost organization. Uh, there is one issue uh, that we will be looking into uh, in the very near future. Um, there appears to be some issues with the timeliness uh, and effectiveness of the uh, funds transfers from uh, Ticket Leap into our bank account. So uh, Steve and I will be doing a, a little research into that to make sure that that is um, uh, handled effectively. Um, but overall, um, uh, the financial situation for the organization is strong. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Martin Cheney, your technology report. Yeah, um, hmm, okay. I don't know if anybody can see me because the screen is still being shared. Um, but um, just um, two things that for technology, we have two projects that I'm working on. One is to try to get the website more current and, um, and relevant. And the other is trying to restructure the archives of files that we use to manage our history and to um, communicate things that we're working on. And um, if there's anybody who would like to join in, um, in doing that work, that would be awesome. And people can email me, um, I think maybe through my personal email would be best. It's like my name, martin at sign cheney.org and we'll figure out how to um how to utilize that it would be lovely if people do that are are some people other than our usual suspects because everybody that's active on the board right now is really pretty tapped out and so getting some some new members in who are looking for activities to keep them busy would be um would be just awesome okay Thank you. And uh, Anne, your membership report. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped Justin. Justin's next. Justin, tell us about all the communication stuff you've been doing. We don't have time. Uh, first of all, it takes a village. So um, we've got a lot of people whose hands are in this. And as we're trying to, like the candidates, embrace the online digital age, Everything I know now is 10 times what I knew four months ago, which was 10 times what I knew, you know, in the early part of the year, which is 10 times what I knew two years ago. So each time I thought, oh, I've arrived, and then I have to learn more. And it's by sharing information. So as we are doing this meeting, and you see how it works, and as we've done a lot of these more digital spaces, don't assume that we have the ap actual path. We're working with what we've learned, and we work as a team. I'm, I merely lead the team. So any feedback you can give after this is done will help us improve this interactiveness and accessibility in the future. Uh, so if it went really well tonight, I appreciate your support. If it went bad, I'm gonna say it's Anne's fault, so. <laughs> so. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Love the t-shirt, by the way. Uh, Anne, to you. So I am pleased to report we currently have 71 members representing all 10 congressional districts 47 of our 49 legislative districts and 27 of our 39 counties. Great, thank you very much. Okay, um, Arvia, this next bit is yours. Yes, yeah, so, um, so tonight um, we're really excited to have um, to have Tolly, Holly Towns and Amy Wayless here uh, to talk to us about a very exciting bill that was passed by our Washington State Legislature last, um, 
last session, the Clean Buildings Bill. And it's really important in environmental advocacy that not only do we advocate for, for, the, for the legislation that we want, but also to follow through and make sure that when things are implemented, that they're implemented in a very robust way, especially now when we only have eight years left to address climate change and meet our state goals, which are in line with the Paris Agreement. So, um, so our, our next presentation is about the rulemaking for the Clean Buildings Act, uh, starting with Amy Wheelis. Thank you, Arvia. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So just give me one second while I get that set up. Um, as Arvia said, my name is Amy Wheelis, and I am hopefully sharing my screen now. Um, I, I am a policy associate at the Northwest Energy Coalition, um, which is a nonprofit that works in the four Northwest states, including Washington. And I also have another hat. I also um, I am a co-chair of Shift Zero, which is an alliance of green building advocates working in Washington for zero carbon buildings for all. And then I guess uh, relevant to this group, I have a third hat. I'm also a PCO for the 36th district. Um, so thank you for having me uh, talk for a little bit tonight. And uh, I'll give you a background about what this bill was when it um, passed in 2019, and then I'll hand it over to Holly to give uh, kind of the call to action. So backing up, I think we have a fairly um, educated group of folks on the phone, but you know, for a lot of people that I talk to, they say, uh, why are we talking about buildings? Transportation is super important. And it's true, transportation emissions are our biggest um, source of climate emissions in Washington. But buildings are our second largest. And I think more importantly, they're our fastest growing source of emissions. Um, since 1990, they're up uh, more than 50%. Um, most of that is driven by population growth, of course, but also an increasing, um, use of gas and new, new construction. Um, it's definitely up. Um, a building built, you know, more recently is more likely to have uh, been built with fossil fuels than a building built in the, the late eight, or the early 80s, for example. So um, if you recall in 2019, Governor Inslee had a big climate package that um, uh, had kind of took a multi-sector approach to addressing emissions. Um, and this was one of those, um, uh, sector. So it, it took a, a hard look at buildings and, and said, like, what, what are the things that we can do to address emissions from buildings? Um, sponsored by Representative Dolio in the House um, and Senator Carlisle in the Senate. And it, it did three things in the final iteration of the bill. One, um, it directed the Department of Commerce to develop energy use performance standards for large existing commercial buildings and set up an incentive program. It also requires gas um, distribution utilities, so Puget Sound Energy, Avista, Cascade Natural Gas, Northwest Natural, to um, do energy efficiency programs um, and include a, include a cost of carbon in their planning. Um, and this is similar to what is required on the electric side. <clears throat> and then finally, it requires most new large buildings um, in the state to include um, EV charging infrastructure going forward. So I'm going to focus mostly on this first one. Um, and the rulemaking, um, as I said, this bill passed in 2019. Rulemaking started um, in late 2019, and it will is uh, required by statute to finish in November of this year. So we're coming up on that. Um, backing up just a little bit, I just want to make clear that Washington is the first state in the nation that has um, passed a building performance standard. Um, so to actually require mandatory retrofits for existing buildings. Um, New York City, Washington, D.C., and St. Louis are three cities that have taken this step, but Washington is the first state. So I think that's pretty noteworthy. Um, it applies to large existing commercial buildings, as I said. So that's basically buildings over 50,000 square feet. And I, I personally have a hard time visualizing sometimes what 50,000 square feet means. Um, but uh, if you think of a, a large big box store, Fred Meyer and Ballard, uh, which is near where I live, that's around... 80,000 square feet. Um, and the uh, Columbia Tower in downtown Seattle is over a million square feet. <clears throat> so this uh, bill requires buildings to meet specific energy use targets beginning in 2026, um, but provides an incentive program for those who take early action in the, in the upcoming years. And I think it's important to note that these targets for buildings are based on energy use. So basically how much energy is used per square foot it is not based on greenhouse gas emissions um, per square foot. And it's also important to note that owners, building owners only have to do things that are cost effective. Um, 
but that they do need to take some sort of action to figure out what that is. So um, even spurring an energy audit is, is a step that they didn't necessarily have to take before. And finally, it leaves the target setting to the Department of Commerce. So it gives the legislation gave a lot of the leeway to figuring out what the target should be to the department. <clears throat> and so working in an advocacy space, what am I looking for in this rulemaking, um, which took place over many, many uh, public meetings and uh, since March, uh, all virtual. So it's been, it's been an interesting process, but the main things that I'm looking for in the rulemaking um, are that there are strong targets for all building types, that there are more ambitious targets for newer buildings. So basically if you're a building built since, you know, on the last 10 years, you are being built under a pretty strong energy code. So you, basically you should be able to perform better um, and, and lower targets don't serve as well. Um, I think it's important that there be a kind of a stretch target for a jurisdiction to easily adopt. And specifically for, for those of us in Seattle, the city of Seattle has taken a lot of um, steps in the past few years to already address existing buildings. So many of the buildings in Seattle are already up to a certain standard and they can probably go further. Um, I'm also looking for how can we incorporate a greenhouse gas emission standard into either compliance or the incentive program. And then I think it's important to know that it's not part of the rulemaking, but this is since it is a new policy space, clear education and outreach um, to building owners is gonna be really important if we're gonna make this impactful. So I think I'll turn it over to Holly now to kind of give you the call to action. Oops. Hi, I'm working on this. this is my first time giving a presentation in a Zoom call. So let's see, enter. Okay, can you see my screen now? Can you see my presentation? We can. Okay, gosh, I'm wondering how I'm gonna advance these. <laughs> I guess I'll figure that out. Um, do I just, okay, anyway, I'm Holly Towns. Um, I recently joined the 43rd District Democrats Environmental Caucus. Uh, because I retired, and uh, what I retired from is a career in building energy efficiency. Uh, in the last two-thirds of that career, um, I started in 1979, and in the last two-thirds of my career, I uh, was a mechanical engineer um, in energy efficiency in buildings. So uh, I saw this bill come up, I saw that the rulemaking was happening, and I started to look into it, and as Arbia said, uh, it's all in the details. <laughs> if we really want to impact the greenhouse gases for this big contributor, these large big buildings are big contributors of greenhouse gases, it's going to be, and what are the details? And really here is the goal of the bill was for the department to maximize the reductions of greenhouse gas emissions. That's written right into the bill. And this is really a call to action because they are, the, the department uh, is being very conservative and we feel that they can do much better and therefore we could reduce a lot more greenhouse gases. And this is a big opportunity for this big sector. Okay, let me see, how do I get to the next? There it is, <laughs> yay. <laughs> um, so we really believe that they could be much more robust in their performance targets. Right now, they're setting a target of 15% below the mean energy use. Their own consultants say that most buildings can achieve 15 to 35% without doing major equipment upgrades. Um, and looking at their data, their mean energy use that they're looking at is an estimate. It doesn't, it includes the entire region and not just Washington State. Um, Seattle has, has data um, and their buildings are doing a lot better. So it's questionable whether the data, they're using the data that's available and they're doing the best they can. But um, also there's 
they're looking at past data. These buildings don't have to comply for another six years and the buildings will get better. Secondly, uh, we think that it makes sense for them to require the benchmarking, these buildings going through and figuring out what their energy is as soon as possible so that we have better data and they can adjust the targets to be uh, fit better data. Only makes sense to us. They're eventually gonna have to do benchmarking anyway. Why not start that now? Uh, thirdly, uh, as Amy uh, mentioned, the energy code uh, means that buildings are a lot more efficient in each code cycle. However, they've only set one uh, lower target for newer buildings, buildings built under uh, 2015 code or, or more recently. Well, there's going to be two more cycles of code coming up, uh, 2000, one that's coming on soon and another in 2023. And so we believe that they could increase the reduction or make more reductions with each building code cycle. And that- Oh, yeah, I'm gonna interrupt you for just a second. I think you might wanna click over on the, the left of your screen because your slides aren't advancing. So maybe if you just click on them or, or press play. Um, so I'm still on one slide. <laughs> oh, I, I do apologize. So I'm on the increase reduction for each energy code cycle. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, and the third thing uh, for robust targets is uh, it would be good if they, beyond 2026, when they're required to meet this, to keep stepping up the targets. This would get people to start uh, implementing things faster and uh, because they're seeing that if they wait, they're going to have to meet a bigger target. So those are three, four things on the more robust targets that we're looking for. The other thing is we'd like to see them emphasize greenhouse gas reductions more. That is the point of the bill. <laughs> um, and so far, there's some areas that they have not um, decided to go into that we think they should. One, they could adjust the target for gas use. 80% uh, of the commercial buildings use gas for heating. Like in Seattle, 75% of the greenhouse gases from buildings come from gas heating. So we, we need to target the gas use in the buildings, um, especially since we're going to all renewable uh, electricity in the near future. Secondly, as Amy mentioned, allowing local jurisdiction to set uh, more robust targets, but specifically a greenhouse gas target rather than an energy use target. I believe Seattle would uh, would like to do that and uh, maybe other jurisdictions as well. Another way to emphasize the greenhouse gases is to include the cost of carbon when they do their cost effectiveness calculation. They could also provide incentives based on greenhouse gas reduction. So more incentive, the more you reduce your greenhouse gases in the buildings. They haven't done any rules around the incentives yet. Um, and uh, so we're putting that out there as something they, we would recommend. And finally, how do we know that this bill is actually going to have a significant impact or a great impact on greenhouse gas reductions. We don't know yet because they have made no estimate of what the reduction is going to be uh, with the roles that they are proposing. So we believe that they should do that. We need to know how it's going to meet the targets of the state and uh, at their various levels, for example, of targets that they're setting and uh, so we can plan in the state and know that we have actually moving forward as we want to. So I, we're asking you to speak up. Uh, now is the time, the target rules are out. Uh, they're out for comment. You can make written comments by September 22nd. There's a hearing on September 22nd, you would speak then. You can send your comments to the Department of Commerce, contact the governor and your state representatives. And we will have a sample letter that uh, we'll post on the ECC website that you can use as a starting point. 
Then the incentive rules are uh, coming up. And as I mentioned, there's some areas there to make greenhouse gases uh, more of an emphasis. And I think they're gonna be working on those in November and December. If you wanna get more into the details, there's the link uh, to the bill, to all of the hearings and the research that they've done. And both Amy and I um, have been working together and talking together and can answer your questions. Or if you want us to contact you directly, uh, you can sign up on the website of the Commerce to get notifications. But if you want to talk to us or have us contact you when things are happening, please send us an email. So step up, help us get the best uh, greenhouse gas reduction that we can from this bill. And it's all in the details, guys. Thank you. Oh, and then now we are open for questions. Are there any questions? Um, How do I see questions? Going once, questions going twice. Um, Polly, could you send to us, uh, oh, Sharon, Sharon, could you type your, your question into the chat? Holly, could you send us your slide deck? And um, sure. we'll make sure that, that people can see that and find it because there was some inter interesting information there. Certainly. And uh, there's, am I supposed to be looking at the chat or? <laughs> no, I guess I am. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Sharon, what's your question? Oh, hi, thanks. Yes, so um, I'm curious if emissions from the U.S. military in our state are counted into our state emissions and, and how they're counted. Uh, well, any buildings that are in our state would be covered under this act. Uh, no, talking about an emission no? in general. Amy, what do you know? Uh, maybe, maybe this is not his expertise, so I apologize for that. Yeah, I don't, I... <laughs> yeah, I don't think I know the specific answer to your question, Sharon, on how they're or whether they're counted. I do know that for this bill, um, federal buildings are under their own jurisdiction, so they go um, qualify. Okay, uh, Marilyn Chase. Um, Thank you, Amy. Would you go ahead, please? I just had a question on what was what was on the rest of the slide deck that you might want to take with us. So Holly, unfortunately, we we could only see your title slide for the whole time. What? Yeah, yeah. So um, so we will be sure to post that both on. Oh, our I wish somebody page. had said that. Um, oh, actually, Justin did, and then I oh. sent a private message. Oh, okay. Uh, so we'll we'll be posting that uh, both on our Facebook page and um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and uh, uh, on our face on our Facebook page on our web page, and we'll make it available through the YouTube. This is being recorded, and this is a good segue into the next part. I'm so of, sorry, uh, I. That's right. Thank like you. Said, this is the first time I've done this. I thought I saw it on my screen, so I figured it was moving forward. Um, so this is a good segue uh, into the next part of our, um, our event. And um, so we're just going to move on here because we have a lot of candidates to hear from. Uh, this is being recorded um, on YouTube. It's being streamed live on YouTube and recorded. And so uh, the entire event, all of the presentations, and um, Holly's slide deck and Amy's slide deck will all be available through YouTube. So um, uh, that information is going to get out there. And uh, we really, really appreciate your being with us to, to tell us about this. It's uh, kind of an opaque subject, and it really helps people understand how the whole process works. OK. Um, so moving on to the candidate presentations, if you're following along with the agenda, you'll see a list of names. I believe we have 40 candidates or campaign representatives uh, who uh, were interested in speaking tonight. If you see us skip one, it's because they're not here yet. 
and uh, we'll hope that they'll arrive later and we'll fit them in later in the program. But uh, we're just gonna go through the list uh, as scheduled, uh, provided the candidates are, are present and um, we'll fit everybody in. Uh, a note to members, um, your ballots, watch your email for your endorsement ballot. They'll be ma mailed, emailed to you uh, before September 8th. Uh, and then once you receive your ballot, you'll have a week to complete it. Of course, just like all the other ballots these days, the sooner you get it done and get it back to us, the better. Uh, all of the candidates' responses to the questions on our endorsement questionnaire will be there as part of the ballot for you to read. And I know everyone is taking this very seriously. So we really appreciate you taking the time for this. Uh, our, our first uh, candidate speaker is a uh, candidate for Lieutenant Governor. That is Marco Elias. And um, Marco, welcome. And um, you have two minutes, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I'm Marco Elias, a lifelong Washingtonian state senator and college professor running to be our next Lieutenant Governor. I don't need to tell you about the challenges we face in this moment. We are all witnessing history. And I believe our current reality demands bold transformational change. And I believe that I'm uniquely positioned to deliver that change. Now, not everyone knows exactly what the Lieutenant Governor does. So I wanna lay it out. The most important role is serving as Senate president as the only Senator running and as the only person with leadership experience as our majority floor leader making change in the Senate, I'm uniquely qualified. And it led our current Lieutenant Governor Cyrus Habib to endorse me calling me the most qualified. But the role of Lieutenant Governor is much more than just that. As number two in the executive branch with the right kind of leader, this office could be a game changer for the bold transformation that we need right now. And when you look at my work over 12 years in the legislature, I bring both the progressive record and the relationships it's gonna to take to deliver that change. I led efforts to close our state's last coal-fired power plant and pass the largest expansion of mass transit in state history through ST3. That's bold climate action and we need more of it. But climate change isn't the only environmental threat we face. The health of our Salish Sea and the survival of our Southern resident orcas is in danger too. I was proud to help lead efforts to boost state funding for Puget Sound recovery by 20% in our first year back in the Senate majority with another historic increase last year driven by raising taxes on big polluters and big oil. That's over $2 billion in recent years to this critical effort, and we're not done yet. I've also taken the lead on helping pass critical new protections for our pollinators and expand research into soil health statewide. Our investments in sustainable ag have massive potential to reduce emissions by sequestering more carbon in our soils while building up rural economies all over our state. As our next Lieutenant Governor, I'll focus on the issues that are critical to our recovery and building a sustainable future for all of us. We have to build back the economy better than it was before the crisis, an economy that works for everyone, not just the millionaires and billionaires and big polluters, and we have to center our work in equity and social justice. That's my vision. I hope you'll join me in the work ahead. I would be so honored to have your support. Thank you very much, Marco. Our next speaker is, um, from the Susan Del Bene campaign, we have- I do apologize, we need to squeeze in Mr. Uh, Representative Heck. Oh, he, he squoze in between the last time I looked at the spreadsheet and now I'm very sorry. Uh, our next speaker is a candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, uh, he of the impeccable timing, uh, Denny Heck, please go ahead. <laughs> thank you very much. First, I want to thank you for your work and tell you how much I would be honored and humbled to have your support. I offer myself as a candidate who deeply believes it's time to act, not to talk. And I am a candidate with lifelong commitment to environmental values. I'm not new to this fight. In, in fact, I even majored in ecology, which wasn't even a discipline at the time at Evergreen State College. And that commitment continued during my time in the legislature and working as chief of staff to Governor Gardner and into Congress, where I immediately helped form and stood up the Puget Sound Recovery Caucus, passed major legislation out of the House to concentrate the efforts of the federal agencies and increase the funding so that they could do it. I was the first member of the congressional delegation to sign on to Initiative 1631, because again, it's time to act, not talk, uh, on climate change, absolutely. I'm also an original sponsor of the Carbon Fee and Dividend Bill. As a member of Congress, I have the highest LCV rating of any member of our delegation elected with or before me 
that's most of us, actions not taught. Looking forward, our state's going to be faced with a triple crisis, COVID, a recession, and a budget shortfall. We must not let the latter lead to a reduction in our environmental enforcement, and we must make a priority out of rebuilding our economy in a more sustainable way, one that helps clean up Puget Sound and massively increases our use of renewable energy. Finally, it is far past time for Senate Democratic leadership to bring the low carbon fuel standard bill to a vote on the floor of the Senate, no more excuses. And yes, we must do all of this in a way that recognizes the very real intersection between these issues and those of economic and racial justice. It is time to act, not talk. Thank you very much for your consideration and the work you do every day. Thank you very much, Congressman Heck. Uh, okay, next up, uh, we have um, for the Susan Del Benny campaign, we have Melissa Plummer. Welcome, Melissa, please go ahead. Hi everyone, thank you all for having me. The Congresswoman asked me to pass along her apologies for not being able to join you this evening. Um, since she's not here, I do wanna say, she always loves to say that she gets to represent the most beautiful congressional district in the country. Um, and I have to say that I agree. Sorry, sorry, Congressman Heck and all the, other, the other eight districts on the call. Um, I know, you know, I don't need to tell you this, the other speakers have also said this, but, um, the beauty that we enjoy in Washington State is something we can't take for granted with a growing climate crisis that's looming. Congresswoman Del Bene believes that the climate crisis is one of the most serious threats that we face and believes that we need to take the necessary steps to build a new economy based on clean and renewable energy sources and reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and foreign oil. Taking care of our natural resources and protecting our environment is critical to protect protecting the quality of life that we each get to cherish in this region. Uh, President Trump has undone a lot of the policies that were put forth during the Obama administration to combat climate change. And Susan has been a strong voice in calling out those, um, those attacks and not just calling them out, but she has actively sponsored and voted for legislation to combat the climate crisis, including one of her first votes in the Congress, the 116th Congress, was to create the new select committee on the climate crisis. She's co-sponsored resolution calling for the US to stay in the Paris Climate Agreement. She's an original co-sponsor of the Green Act that incentivizes the use of renewable energy and technologies. And she's an original co-sponsor for the 100% Clean Economy Act, which lays out principles for federal agency action to ensure the US transitions to 100% clean economy by 2050. One of her biggest priorities in Congress since she was first elected was fully funding the LWCF, which just passed in July as part of the Great American Outdoors Act. So that's also something she's been very excited about. And I know I see my time's almost up. So I just wanna say, I know she would love to have your support and have you guys as a partner to tackle all of these challenges and hopefully you know, take on these bills with a new Congress, with a democratic Senate and a science believer in the White House next year. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Um, next up for uh, the Derek Kilmer campaign, we have Colin McCann. Go ahead, Colin. Hey there, uh, thanks for having me. I am uh, not Derek, but uh, he does send his regards and asked uh, for me to say a few words on his behalf. So um, thanks for having me. Uh, throughout Derek's career, he's been uh, you know, proud not just to be a reliable vote for the environment, but to also be a leader on the issue. Uh, he's been an advocate for clean water. He helped found the Puget Sound Recovery Caucus and, and has pushed back against Donald Trump's anti-environment policies. Uh, he fought to pre uh, prevent the elimination of all federal funding for the Puget Sound Recovery and Salmon Restoration, uh, and he's helped lead the charge to prohibit drilling off our coast. Uh, Derek's also been a defender of our public lands, fighting against Trump's proposals to open them up to the highest bidders and undermine the Antiquities Act. Uh, he introduced and passed from the House the Wild Olympics Act, uh, which would protect our vulnerable forests and rivers uh, on the Olympic Peninsula. He's also introduced bills to address the maintenance backlog of our parks. Uh, and moreover, he's fighting for urgent action to solve the climate crisis because he knows our nation can't afford to wait any longer. 
Uh, as a member of the Energy and Water Subcommittee on Appropriations, uh, he's a leading voice calling for investments in clean energy uh, and other areas that we can make real progress on climate change. Uh, and he sponsored bills to re-enter the U.S. Uh, into the Paris Climate Treaty, get us to net zero emission, end tax breaks for big oil, and put a price on carbon. And further, because the sixth CD uh, includes 11 indigenous tribes, many of whom are already in the process of moving to higher ground, uh, Derek's proud that the House passed his Ocean Acidification Innovation Act to increase federal research in changing ocean chemistry, as well as the Tribal Coastal Resiliency Act uh, to help our region's tribes address the impacts of climate change. So those are just a few of the reasons why Derek's been endorsed by uh, environmental leaders like the League of Conservation Voters and the Sierra Club, uh, and it's why he also asked for your endorsement today. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Arshia Nilchian for Adam Smith. Go ahead, Arshia. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Arshia Nilchian. I am Congressman Adam Smith's political director. Uh, I know he wishes that he could have been here tonight to speak to all of you, but nevertheless, thank you all for allowing me to uh, say a few words uh, in his stead. Uh, Congressman Smith is a leader in the House of Representatives as the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, he is in a unique and vital position to fight for many of our shared values and priorities. Um, on the House Armed Services Committee, he has led his colleagues in getting the Department of Defense to recognize climate change as a threat to our national security. And he has pushed policies that would move the Department of Defense towards a greener future. Uh, as our representative, Adam continues to fight for important progressive policies in the House. Uh, these include uh, Medicare for All, the 100% Clean Economy Act, and notably the Green New Deal. Um, additionally, he uh, has worked with and continues to work closely with communities in the Ninth District uh, that seek environmental justice, particularly as it relates to airplane noise in the area. Uh, Adam has secured funding for noise mitigation to go towards schools located close to the SeaTac Airport. Uh, and he has also introduced the Aviation Impacted Communities Act to support uh, communities that have been affected by airplane noise. Um, it remains Adam's deepest honor to represent the area that he has always called home and grown up in. Um, but as we can all agree, there is much more to be accomplished and much more work to do as we move ahead. Uh, including criminal justice reform, um, and especially in advancing environmental legislation to ensure that we have a healthy planet for generations to come. Uh, we look forward to continue to work together and hope to earn your endorsement. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Arashio. Uh Next up, uh, we have candidate for the 10th CD House of Representatives, Beth Dolio. So um, I'm Representative Beth Dolio, serving the 22nd Legislative District currently, which makes up about 25% of the 10th Congressional District. When considering running for this position, my 16-year-old son Aspen said, Mom, you have to run for Congress. You're the best person to fix the climate crisis, and that's the most important issue for my generation. He knows that I have made the environment and climate justice a priority of mine for the last 29 years. I was the first executive director of Washington Conservation Voters way back in 1991. I worked for Audubon Washington and have spent the last 13 years at Climate Solutions. And while there, I directed the regional Power Pass Coal campaign, working directly with organizations and hand in hand with tribes from Montana through to British Columbia. And together, we stopped seven coal export proposals dead in their tracks. I'm clearly the only candidate that has the experience in taking on the fossil fuel industry and winning. I'm also the only candidate in this race that really has a depth of knowledge, policy experience, and actually passing policies to create our fossil free future. I was front and center getting the 100% clean electricity bill to the governor's desk. This best in the nation 100% bill requires equity measures and incentivizes labor standards while having hard deadlines to move fossils out of our electricity portfolio. I was also the prime sponsor of the bill that you heard, the Clean Buildings Bill, a first in the nation efficiency standard for existing commercial buildings. 
The bill has $75 million attached to it, creating hundreds of jobs required to retrofit these buildings across the state. Finally, I negotiated the strongest toxics reduction bill in the nation. This is the kind of leadership we need in Congress to take this on if we are to have a livable planet for my son Aspen and the many generations to come. Thank you, Representative Delia. Support the Green New Deal and have the endorsement of the League of Conservation Voters, Sierra Club, Thurston Environmental Vote to Voters, and I would be proud to have yours as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next up, and uh, remember our speakers do have two minutes, uh, Marilyn Strickland. Uh, Maryland is also a candidate for uh, U.S. representative out of the 10th CD. Welcome, Mount Maryland. Please go ahead. Great. Thank you for having me here tonight, and thank you to the Environment and Climate Caucus of the Washington State Democrats. This is the most important election of our lifetimes, and none of us imagined even eight months ago that we would be in the middle of a pandemic, an economic crisis, and social unrest because of racial injustice, and here we are. I'm asking for your vote to be the next member of Congress in the Washington State's 10th district. I'm the winner of the primary election and I have a broad base of diverse support here in our home district. I've earned the endorsements of trusted leaders, including Governor Chris Gregoire, who once served as the director of the Department of Ecology. I have the endorsements of 18 sitting members of Congress, including our own Derek Kilmer and Susan Del Benny, and Les Purse, the former president of the Evergreen State College and the co-chair of the Resident Orca Recovery Task Force. As mayor of Tacoma, I was proud to stand with 140 of my colleagues to recommit ourselves to the Paris Climate Accord when the Trump administration pulled out. I was proud to serve as chair and vice chair of two transit agencies to reduce carbon emissions and in investing in mass transit. We increased increase solar energy use by 26%. We increased our tree canopy dramatically and we worked really hard to ensure that every person who lived in every neighborhood in Tacoma had a chance to live in a place that was green and clean. As a member of Congress, I'm ready to work on the Congressional Action Plan for a Clean Energy Economy. And here's why. It will reduce carbon emissions. It will update our energy infrastructure grid. It will invest in mass transit. It will create living wage jobs and ensure a just and equitable transition to a clean energy economy that leaves no one behind. If elected to Congress, I'll make history as the first African-American member of the Washington State delegation, the first from the Pacific Northwest, and the first Korean-American woman to serve in US history. I humbly ask for your support, and please visit my website at www.stricklandforwashington.com and read about my climate energy policy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Hillary Madsen. She's a candidate for King County Superior Court, position 13. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Hillary Madsen. I am running for King County Superior Court, position number 13. As a lawyer, I've had the opportunity to present cases to judges and to juries in civil and in criminal matters. The King County Superior Court has seven judicial departments. I've appeared in six of those departments. However, trial experience isn't the only reason that I'm running. My career has focused on people who can't afford to pay for lawyers, children and youth, people who are incarcerated, and immigrants working toward a better life. This matters to the Environmental Caucus because climate and environmental justice organizers have long been calling attention to the impacts of pollution in low-income communities and communities of color. I know firsthand through my work representing people who are incarcerated that there is a connection between mass incarceration and environmental justice. Our country's prison industrial complex has little regard for where they build their prisons and even building prisons on polluted grounds. If I'm elected, I'll bring a new level of energy to the King County Superior Court. I'll bring a new perspective having worked for so long in marginalized communities. And I'm proud that I have the confidence of leaders in our community, leaders like Hillary Franz, Senator Bob Hasegawa, Senator Joe Wynn, former Governor Christine Gregoire. I have a unanimous endorsement from the Washington Progressive Caucus. I have 13 sole endorsements from the King County Legislative District Democrat organizations, a sole endorsement from the KCDCC, a sole endorsement from the KCYDs. And I would be honored to have your endorsement because I'm the best candidate to bring reform 
because I'm committed to seeing and hearing from marginalized communities, and because I have the broad legal experience the King County Superior Court needs. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for being with us. Our next speaker is Davina Durr, candidate for first legislative uh, state legislature. Welcome Davina, go ahead. Hello and thank you um, for having me. Uh, my name's Davina Dewar. I am a candidate for the first legislative district. I was appointed last July when um, now Senator uh, Stanford moved up to um, the Senate from the House. So I've been in uh, the legislature for just over a year. Um, and in my first session, I worked on um, a bill called CPACER, which um, is a financing mechanism for commercial um, buildings, which are typically owned for five years or less. And therefore, the owners don't normally want to invest in things such as energy efficiency, um, seismic retrofitting, and those types of things. And it, it passed through the House and the Senate. And um, it allows counties to um, set up this program and the loans travel with the building rather than with the owners. And so those investments can be made right away and the savings reaped and um, help to uh, incentivize uh, building efficiency, which is great for the planet. Um, and the other bill that I worked on is, as far as environmental bills um, was uh, adding the climate change goal to the uh, Growth Management Act. And um, there are 14 right now. And so that would have been the 15th. It made it through the House, but not through the Senate. And so this year, that's my highest priority bill. I'm working with FutureWise. They're actually talking about um, hiring or they plan to hire um, a person to, to work on only advocating for that bill. Um, so we have high hopes for that to get through the House and Senate. And it's not just the goal, but also the element. Um, another bill that I'll be working on um, this year is by Clean by Fair, working with the Blue, uh, Blue Green Alliance. And that uh, is a bill that requires um, uh, reporting on um, carbon, uh, the carbon, um, that's in three products right now. It would be structural products, steel, wood, and um, concrete slash cement, and also working on labor standards. So those are two of the bills I'm working on that have to do with climate. Thank I've been you, endorsed, endorsed by CR Club and Washington Conservation Voters, and I, I hope to get your support as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, our next speaker is um, Lori Fegan. She is a candidate for state representative in the fourth LD. Welcome, Laurie. Please go ahead. Hi, Steve. Thank you all for having me here this evening. Um, I am Laurie Fagan. I'm a first time candidate running for State House of Representatives here in beautiful Eastern Washington's fourth legislative district. I announced my candidacy in um, mid-December, hoping to challenge Matt Shea and get his extreme ideologies out of the State House. Um, but as some of you may know, um, filing week was somewhat eventful and Mr. Shea decided not to run. So I am now challenging or actually being challenged by um, one of his um, uh, good buddies, Bob McCaslin Jr. Um, I decided to run for office, not just because of who I was running against, but because of who and what I was running for. Um, I am a mom, I'm a grandmother. I have been a nurse and a nurse practitioner for over 35 <coughs> years taking care of folks here in our district, regardless of how they vote, who they love, what religion they believe in, um, everybody deserves a place at the table and good representation. A lot of what I run for um, comes from my lived experiences and my worldview. I've traveled around the world. I've seen the impact of climate on the glaciers at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. I've seen the impact of colonialism and fossil fuel exploration in the jungles of Ecuador and in the imperialism and the uh, racial bias in the refugee camps in Northern Thailand and in Vietnam. So in 2016, I decided after the world went a little bit sideways that I was gonna focus my energy and my resources and my experience on serving the people here in my district. I've been involved as a volunteer for our Spokane Riverkeeper, our Lands Council, and everywhere from the Poor People's Campaign to the 
Sunrise Movement, I've seen the impact of young people making a difference in our communities. I'm excited to run for this office, not only for my children and grandchildren, but for yours and climate change and uh, making an impact on the justice system um, in every manner from healthcare to education to jobs from criminal justice. I'm happy to be running for office to represent my district and all of Washington as we make progressive changes to Im impact positively the future of all of us. So I'm delighted to be here. I'm um, excited to have you uh, review my endorsement questionnaire. I'm open for questions now if there's time. Otherwise, again, honored to be here and I hope to earn your endorsement, it would mean a lot. Thank you very much, Laurie uh, Fagan. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. So we're going to move on to um, Bill Ramos, candidate for the fifth LD state legislature. Welcome, Bill, please go ahead. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, I am Bill Ramos running for re Representative Bill Ramos running for re-election in the fifth district. And uh, I've been working in natural resources and environmental work my whole career. I started uh, with a degree in forest science and then spent 30 years with the US Forest Service working in natural resource management and working in environmental analysis and those types of things. Um, but one of the things I'd like to, to talk about is, is I'm a practical guy who likes to get things done and work towards them. And carbon is a big issue, obviously, and it's always been very controversial and you normally very partisan. And this last year, I, just, I uh, sat down to work on carbon sequestration is one of the uh, most important things for me that I thought I could get over the finish line. And working with that, with everybody, continuing to work you know, uh, through discussions and uh, not so lively and sometimes uh, <laughs> Uh, lively discussions until we got to the point where the carbon sequestration bill that couldn't even get talked about in previous sessions passed the House of Representatives unanimously. And that is what I'll bring to the, the way to work with everybody to get to a good solution for all of us and bring folks together towards the end that we need in protecting our climate. That's the way it, we need to work. That bill then passed the Senate with only three no votes. So I don't know of any time uh, other car uh, carbon types of bills have passed with that kind of support across the aisle. So that's what I'll work for to get things done to protect our environment and our resources. And I thank you very much for your time and uh, hopefully I'll get your support. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, next up, uh, we have Ingrid Anderson, also from the 5th LD. She is running for state Senate. Welcome, Ingrid. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So I am a first-time candidate for state Senate in the 5th LD. I am a nurse. My background is primarily emergency medicine as well as psychiatry. And I am going to bring the experience that of a nurse to Olympia. I see our climate crisis as a healthcare crisis. So I think I'm uniquely positioned to talk to other representatives and help bring bills to the floor that have stalled time and time again in the Senate. I am very proud to be endorsed by the Washington Conservation Voters, 350 Seattle. And just this week, I won the endorsement of Governor Jay Inslee. Part of that reason was because of my experience in healthcare, but also because he knows that I will be a champion to pass the clean fuels bill, which is stalled in the Senate for the last two years in a row. I directly see the implications of not passing that bill on the effects of my community when I'm working with patients at the bedside. The way we are reliant on fossil fuels directly relates to the particulate matter that increases the cardiovascular risk of death to our communities, especially in urban areas. So this is an equity issue, a healthcare crisis issue, and a climate crisis issue. I am excited to pass the clean fuel standard bill because immediately we will see a reduction in this particulate matter, which will have profound effects on improving the health of the residents of Washington state. There's a lot that we need to do. And I think bringing my experience as a nurse to the table will speak volumes to other representatives and others in the house. And I so hope that you will consider me in endorsing my race for state Senate. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ingrid Anderson. We really appreciate your being with us. Uh, next up, we have Tom McGarry. He is a candidate for the state legislature in the sixth LD. Go ahead, please, Tom. Thank you, Steve. Yes, my name is Tom McGarry, running for the House from the sixth legislative district in Eastern Washington, Spokane County. My opponent is Jenny Graham. Um, I have a slogan. Uh, serious times require serious people. And frankly, there's nothing more serious than the climate change and, and what's happening to our environment. I want the Environment and Climate Caucus's endorsement because, well, first of all, I believe in science. Uh, my opponent's views on anti-vaccination are, are, are well known. I think that it's a pretty low bar that we should at least uh, believe in science, and, and I do. I believe we have a fiduciary duty to our children and our grandchildren to leave them a world that's habitable. Uh, climate change is a very real and it presents an exist existential threat that must be addressed now. Best practices in in industry to protect the environment must be established now. We must have a reliable and realistic and effective process to transition to renewable energy forms now. I'm a twice elected fire commissioner in Spokane County Fire District 9, who's earned the, the endorsement of Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary Franz. Hopefully we're winding down on our fire season this year, um, but for at least the last five years or so, we've had to deal with smoke every time at this time of year. And it's clearly creates some, some, some health issues. Um, effective forest management is one facet to reducing wildland fires and improving the quality, air quality, and not to mention protecting lives and, and property. I'm committed to leaving a future for our children and children's children in a world that has trees, clean air, and clean water. Thank you for your consideration. I hope I can count on your endorsement for representative from the sixth legislative district. Thank you again. Thank you very much for being with us, Tom McGarry. Uh, next up, uh, we have a video from Zach Zapponi. Zach is running for position one. We just heard from the candidate for position two. Zach is running for position one in the sixth LD. Hi, my name is Zach Zapone and I'm a teacher running for state representative in the sixth legislative district in the Spokane area. I believe that everyone should have a fair shot. And to me, that means good schools, good jobs, that protect workers, affordable healthcare, and uh, making sure that we protect our planet for future generations. A little bit about me, I was born and raised here in Spokane and became a teacher after going to college in Washington, DC where I was one of three students from Eastern Washington and my roommate was one of 22 boys from an all boys private school in New Jersey. That drove my decision to come back to be a teacher to fight for students to have a fair shot. Uh, but after a few years in the classroom uh, teaching in Kennewick, I grew frustrated by barriers to success inside and outside the classroom. No matter how hard my students worked, they struggled to get ahead. And so I decided to get my master's in public policy from Princeton, move back home to Spokane and fight for students' needs here in the area. I believe that it is critically important to combat the climate crisis that our planet is facing and preserve our planet for future generations. And so that means that we need to uh, continue to hold to our commitment of being a carbon neutral state by 2030, that we need to make sure that we have a just transition for workers who are affected by a transition uh, uh, to a green economy, and that we need to be investing in infrastructure and in green infrastructure that um, will be prepare us for the future. Uh, I would be honored to have your endorsement. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Zach Zapone, and I'm a teacher running for state representative. Thank you, Zach. Uh, next up from that same neck of the woods, just north in the seventh LD running for position one in the state legislature, Georgia Davenport. And uh, I remember Georgia from uh, when ECC was first getting started. Welcome, Georgia. Thank you very, very much. I was actually going to point that out that I remember the first, very first meeting in a bar where we talked about starting the ECC. So I'm really, really happy to be here and to um, ask for your endorsement. I'd be honored to have your endorsement. Um, I believe very strongly in environmental policy. I uh, helped organize No Dapple and Defund Dapple rallies in Seattle. Um, I support the Green New Deal. I um, also would like to point out that my opponent, the incumbent Republican, actually takes donations from Philip 66 and 
Um, I have pledged to not take any contributions from oil companies or pharmaceutical companies or insurance companies. I rely on smaller do small dollar donations because I believe that when a candidate um, or elected official takes donations from these organizations that they're more likely to take those phone calls from those lobbyists. So um, I will keep this very, very short because I know you have a lot more candidates to hear from, but again, I'd be really, really honored to have your endorsement and thank you so much for putting on this meeting tonight. Thank you, Georgia. It's great to see you. You as well. Thank you, Steve. Uh, our next candidate is uh, Tracy Rushing. Tracy is running for the 14th LD uh, State House, position one. Welcome, Tracy. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. Um, so, yes, I'm uh, here in central Washington running to, for state representative of District 14. Um, I'm a local ER doctor here and a mom of three. And um, through my, my job, I've really been witness to some of the extreme disparities in health, happiness, and opportunity here in my district. Um, running for public office was actually never an aspiration for me until the pandemic, having cared for um, a lot of patients who have suffered and died from the same respiratory distress syndrome caused by COVID. Frankly, I was, I was shocked and appalled by um, Representative Chris Corey's decision to file a frivolous lawsuit against the governor's emergency proclamation. Um, Yakima County in particular has suffered more than most others on the West Coast. And instead of advocating for those workers and families um, desperately affected, his own constituents, my neighbors, um, he's chosen a lawsuit in Cavalier Messaging, which have undoubtedly abetted the spread of disease. Um, these are the same families that still often do not have access to clean water in their homes because of our environmental policies. These are the same families that oftentimes are suffering from chronic health issues because of environmental pollutants and because they are disproportionately affected by um, the changes due to climate change. So um, when I saw that he remained unopposed on the final filing day, I felt compelled to run. Um, we've tried to teach our kids that when something is broken, we should try to fix it. And I decided I needed to model that. Um, I think uh, leaders have the potential to help and the responsibility to try. And that's really why I'm here right now. I think our district needs leaders who recognize that our economy is dependent on the well-being of both our people and our environment. I think I have the perspective and compassion to represent diverse viewpoints across the district. Um, and while advocating for policies that protect our people, our jobs and our planet. So really um, kind of in summary from the playroom to the planet, I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that we've tried to teach our kids to leave the world a better place than they found it. And um, that's the yardstick. It really informs my care for the next patient, um, my respect for our planet, and my desire for a more fair, loving, and just society. Um, I think these priorities have been lacking from Central Washington's current leadership, and I believe I represent a common sense, compassionate alternative to that. So I appreciate you considering uh, endorsing my candidacy, and I look forward to hopefully working with you. Thank you, Tracy. It's great to meet you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. And our next speaker is Carly Coburn, running for the State House position two in the 16th LD. Hi, thank you so very much. I appreciate you all taking the time uh, to listen to me and all the other candidates uh, address you tonight. Um, today, so I'm running in Eastern Washington over here. It, you know, we have a lot of fires, a lot of weeds, and a lot of tumbleweeds. And all of those can cause, uh, even the tumbleweeds, can cause some real issues for us. Um, so I am completely on board with doing everything we possibly can to reduce uh, fires in our state. Uh, in eastern Washington, where I live, uh, I'm from Pasco. Uh, we have a significantly shorter lifespan than folks on the west side of Washington. And Part of that is that we don't have access to medical care that we need, and we experience environmental factors such as fires. Um, I know one woman who had claimed that her younger brother passed a few years ago 
because they couldn't afford his inhaler and the wildfires were so bad. Um, so I'm really dedicated to uh, fighting for, uh, for environmentalism and for making it equitable because what the East Side needs is sometimes ever so slightly different than what the West Side needs and what the West Side needs is sometimes different than what the East Side needs. Um, I am proud to say that uh, the day I learned I was endorsed by the Washington Conservation Voters. I have also uh, taken the um, uh, no fossil fuel money uh, pledge uh, to not take over $200 from fossil fuels, lobbyers, etc. cetera. Um, and I would just really appreciate if you would all consider endorsing me. Um, I just wanna leave you with one of my favorite quotes because to me, it really um, speaks for environmentalism and for me as a personal candidate. And it's a quote from uh, Atel Adnan. And it's, when you realize you are mortal, you also realize the tremendousness of the future. You fall in love with a time you will never perceive. I hope that we fall in love, the times that we have fallen in love with, we will get to perceive. Thank you, Carly. Thank, Thank you. Our next speaker is a candidate for state Senate, Daniel Smith from the, the 17th Legislative District. Welcome, Daniel. Okay, not seeing uh, Daniel here. Daniel, uh, if you're present and you're having trouble, contact um, uh, Justin Baird through this. I am, I am present. I uh, ask for that real quickly. Thank you for having me. I'll, I'll speed up my time. Okay. Uh, Daniel Smith down here in the 17th Legislative District running for State Senate uh, against incumbent uh, Linda Wilson. Yeah, I bring to, uh, to this race over 23 years of building coalitions and addressing uh, disparities in health and all manner of uh, economic and social issues uh, as a social worker for over 23 years. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud about is uh, I raised two daughters who my wife and I um, are very dedicated to teaching that we have a responsibility to, to leave this world a better place than what we found it. Uh, and we expect the same situation uh, as we move forward in our campaign. Um, I know how to build coalitions across communities. I know how to empower voices and bring everybody to the table to work collectively to solve issues. Uh, this election is definitely not going to be a sleepy 17th. It's certainly one of the most uh, important uh, elections to flip from red to blue. And my opponent is silent. Uh, and worse, she's a proponent uh, against environmental issues. And I think that this community really deserves a strong voice in Olympia to deliver results. Uh, I made the decision ru to run because I believe the 17th has a chance to hire someone to represent them in the Senate who will really be focused on health care, child care, housing, and their environment, and of course, making sure that our social safety net system and the rising cost of living and hardworking families is addressed. We know that we thrive when we work together. I have the experience to solve problems collectively and that are important to each of us. Uh, again, really honored to be here tonight. Uh, absolutely uh, welcome the opportunity to earn your endorsement. Thank you, Daniel. We really appreciate your being here. Our next speaker is um, um, going to be speaking for Donna Sinclair. Donna is a candidate in the 8th LD for the state representative uh, position two. Mark Huey is speaking for her. Please go ahead, Mark. Good evening, all. I live in Washugo. I'm a PCO uh, in the same town as Donna. She's a couple precincts away. Unfortunately, she cannot be here this evening. She's got a, another event that she gets to go attend and win more votes. Donna's been endorsed by the 18th Legislative District. We're located in east side of Clark County. Her background includes uh, teaching history at WSU Vancouver. Uh, and she majored in urban studies. However, of interest is her when she achieved her master's degree, it was in environmental history and her emphasis was on the Columbian Basin and its history, along with the native tribe that are along the area. 
originally she was a WSU Cougar, she wanted me to add. The last couple of years she's been on the Washougal School Board, so she's become pretty familiar with how education is working locally. And along with that, she worked with me on responding to our local utility on uh, integrated resource plan, IRP. Um, that was asked for locally and perhaps many of you have participated in. With her broad perspective in environmental history, uh, she focused on the Columbia Basin and feels that's a perspective that she can share in the state legislature. Of course, she's concerned about climate. She's learning more as we all are along the way. And while I'm talking about Donna, I'm gonna brag a minute about her recent book because I read it it's called Black Woman in Green. And if anybody's looking for something good to read, they can uh, catch up with that or visit Donna on her Facebook site. Donna's definitely a candidate that we're looking forward to putting our trust in ahead of uh, in the future. Please consider the endorsement. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mark Huey for Donna Sinclair. Um, our next speaker is from the 20th LD running for the state legislature, Timothy Zahn. Welcome, Timothy. You're gonna to need to unmute yourself, Timothy. There you go. Hi, Timothy Zahn. Uh, I'm hoping that I can prove to you how uh, committed I am to improving our environment and making sure it stays healthy. My district is very rural and heavily forested, but a great deal of this forest is owned by large timber companies. This has resulted in dark, overly dense monoculture forests. And these forests are silent and grim. Uh, they provide poor habitat and unappealing recreational opportunities. I plan to propose the purchase of large sections of timber land to be repurposed into parks. We can then restore the natural ecosystem, creating habitat for native species and much needed outdoor escape for the people of Southwest Washington. Farms and farmers are another vital part of my district and indeed our state. Therefore, I seek to protect our farmers and their lands from urban sprawl and rising costs. Furthermore, I want to expand access to higher education, ensuring that our farmers use sustainable methods and few generations understand the importance of an intact ecosystem. I will show those who believe that economic growth and environmental protection are actually exclusive, that they could not be further from the truth. These projects will bring new prosperity and appreciation for nature to the communities of Southwest Washington. I care deeply about the environment and people of the state, and I will work hard to ensure that both remain healthy. Thank you, and I, I hope to... Thank you very much, Timothy. Thank you for being with us and um, thank you for running. <clears throat> Next up, uh, we have a representative for Tara Simmons. Tara is running for the State House in the 23rd LD. And uh, we have Jeff Bolak to speak for her. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeff Bolak and I am here to represent Tara Simmons. Um, as Steve mentioned, Tara's running in the 23rd Legislative District. And um, to be entirely truthful, environment, it's a huge is issue up here. Uh, Bainbridge Island and a lot of folks within the communities out here, environment's really one of their number one topics. And if elected, Tara, one of one of her real priorities is, is doing what, what she can to get our ferry system transitioned to a more sustainable one and focusing on issues like that. And just, because we do need to be having much more sustainable travel than what we do right now. And I mean, that's that's gonna be a real priority for terrorists. And I, I think the other thing, just uh, because I do think it's always an important thing to highlight here, if elected terror will become uh, the first formerly incarcerated person in a state legislature in the nation. So 
I know that it ends up being a little bit different, but it does give her a little bit of a different perspective when we're talking about environmental justice issues. Because, I mean, frankly, it's like that you look at the people who, after they've done incarceration, where they're where they're living, they're, they're places, a lot of times in places that are going to suffer the biggest environmental harm. So that's something that Tara's really going to be on the lookout for. So really hope to gain your all's and y'all's endorsement. And um, really, thank you for inviting us. Um, I know Tara's really sorry she wasn't able to make it. Unfortunately, this is just the first few days since the primary where her and her husband were able to take a few days off. So, but thanks y'all and have a great uh, rest of the day, the night. Thank you, Jeff. Um... Our next speaker is Jamie Smith, running for the state legislature in the 25th LD. Welcome, Jamie. Steve, Jamie isn't here. Our next speaker is Marie Levitt. Ah. I apologize. Uh, Marie Levitt running for position one in the 28th legislative district uh, house representative. What, 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 what are you apologizing for? We don't have time for your answer, but thank you. Mary Levitt, please go ahead. Hi all, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Apologies, I was on another another Zoom meeting. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Mari Levitt and I am a representative in the 28th Legislative District. And if you're not familiar with the 28th, it's Western Pierce County and, and Western State Hospital is part of our district as is JBLM and very honored to be here. I'm proud to have the endorsement of the Sierra Club as well as the Washington Conservation Voters and just finished up my first term serving in the 28th as a state house representative. and and Phil, that this past term, we really had some great environmental policy changes uh, that really, I think, will go a long way for um, issues of environmental justice, but then also making sure that our communities of color who are hit in particularly hard for environmental policies that have promoted pollution and have um, focused on economic return versus making sure that our communities are healthy and safe um, are reversed. And so very proud to have voted and co-sponsored much of that legislation. Also brought home a million dollars for a salmon restoration project in my district and also co-sponsored you know, bills from clean energy and making sure we have infrastructure to low carbon fuel standards and hopefully we'll get that across the line this upcoming term. And so very grateful to be here, very honored uh, to be able to work on environmental policy in particular for our areas of low or high poverty communities of color who really have high pro, you know, propensity for environmental health challenges. Um, and a lot of that is because of the pollution and because of the fact that we haven't done what we should have been doing for a very long time and really started that work this past term and, and plan to continue those efforts moving forward. Thank you very much, Mari. Uh, our next speaker is uh, from the 11th LD, David Hackney. David, welcome, please go ahead. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for this opportunity. My name is David Hackney and I'm running for the state legislature in the 11th district, uh, position one. Uh, I'm running because representation matters. I'm running because black lives matter and I'm running because black legislators matter because we actually live these issues and don't just don't campaign on them every two years. I Can't Breathe has been uttered in my community for generations. Environmental justice has, injustice has led to increased rates of respiratory disease and asthma that, asthma that cannot be explained by socioeconomic factors. Police injustice has led to violence and death. In this time of necessary for personal protective equipment, PPE, I think we also need PPDs, proud progressive Democrats who understand that the status quo is unacceptable and can be changed. The status quo is global warming. We can't invest in green, uh, a green economy and energy. The status quo is environmental racism. We can make sure that communities of color and low-income communities do not suffer more from uh, global warming and other uh, environmental uh, issues. The status quo is mass incarceration. We can reform our criminal justice system and make it fair to everyone and stop 
uh, you know, warehousing and stockpiling uh, young lives. The status quo is income inequality. We can develop an economy that works for everyone, that working people have more spending power and earning power. The status quo is lack of funding for education. We can make sure that we educate, meet the educational needs of every child to meet their full um, potential. And the status quo is increased gun violence. Gun violence is preventable and we can have responsible gun laws that make a difference. So I'm running to make a difference because the status quo is unacceptable. And environmental injustice is one of the major issues that are impacting people in my community. South King County has lower median income than the rest of the county, higher incidence of you, David. Uh, respiratory disease and gun violence. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for running, especially. Our next speaker from the uh, 28th LD running for the State House is um, Dan Bernowski. Hello, Dan. Welcome. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Dan Bernowski, and I am running for the House of Representatives out here in the 28th LD. And for the past 20 years, I've served this community as a firefighter. And as a firefighter, I realized, just like we all do, that climate change is an exponential crisis that we have to tackle now. I, I hate seeing brothers and sisters uh, from across the state uh, fight fires within the state and, you know, California, all up and down the, uh, the, uh, the West Coast. And uh, they're putting their lives on the line. Uh, they're battling fires that are hotter and more dangerous than they ever have been, probably in the history of humanity. And uh, climate change is a, a direct contributor to that. Um, something else that I'm really concerned about that I think that um, uh, uh, climate protections and worker protections can intersect is uh, eliminating uh, dirty fuel. So what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I work on a fire engine and uh, diesel particulates are a known carcinogen. And not only do they help uh, spew, uh, you know, carbon into our environment, but uh, they're giving uh, firefighters and people that have to work around diesel emissions uh, cancers at disproportionately higher rates than the general public. And um, also as a public employee, uh, I work in uh, old public buildings. So I work in fire stations that are 20 to 30 years old and not to sound too banal, but uh, we need to invest in infrastructure in public buildings and buildings across the state of Washington to make sure that um, we have uh, efficient buildings that uh, don't use uh, the amount of energy that is um, Again, it just completely wasted. So, uh, you know, I work in a firehouse that has single pane aluminum frame windows because we haven't put the proper incentives in place to make sure the public it's entities fine. have resources needed to make improvements in infrastructure in public buildings. Um, you know, those are the few of the things that I'm looking to work on. And uh, thank you very much for your support. My two minutes is up. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for being here. Our next speaker is Katie Young. Katie is running for state representative in the 31st LD. Welcome, Katie, please go ahead. Thank you. Thanks for having me tonight. My name is Katie Young. I'm running for state rep in the 31st LD position one. Um, thank you so much for taking some time to hear us all today. I am running for state representative because I believe in designing a more equitable future for the people of the 31st district and everyone who calls Washington home. And the way to do that is through progressive policy that invests in our people and our communities. I believe that healthcare is a human right and we have an opportunity in Washington to implement single payer healthcare for every resident. Workers create wealth, but we're largely undervalued in our economy, whether it's wages that keep people struggling to pay their bills, misclassification of employees to avoid fair compensation, or failing to properly mitigate COVID-19 risk in the workplace, we need to make sure that the people who make our economies run are protected. I believe every Washington resident should have access to an excellent education from pre-K through job training, apprenticeships, or college, and with access to critical programs like special education and counseling, which our students are increasingly reliant on to find success. And we can't do any of this if we don't fix our regressive tax structure that puts an unfair burden on our low and middle income residents. Saving my favorite piece of policy, uh, policy pillar for the last, because I know we, it shares a place in all of our hearts, and that is taking swift and aggressive action to mitigate the climate crisis and improve pollution in our state. Our land and farms in the 31st provide an opportunity for farmers to build new revenue streams through methane capturing and preserve, preserving private uh, forests for carbon sequestration. We need to invest in solutions that 
provide public transit in a way that works for more rural and sprawling communities. And like a lot of my colleagues tonight, I've taken the no fossil fuel pledge. I had a great opportunity to talk to some of our climate titans here in Washington, Marco Leas, Beth Dolio, and Hillary Franz in a series called Somebody Should Fix That Climate Change. Change. So if you wanna check that out, you can head over to electkatyoung.com slash somebody should fix that. Thank, Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is uh, Shirley Sutton from the 32nd LD. She's running for position one in the State House. Welcome, Shirley. Please go ahead. You may need to unmute, Shirley. Uh, we still can't hear you, Shirley. Hold on there, please. Could you uh, check your mute situation? Shirley Sutton, you're unmuted. If you can hear, otherwise we might need to move on to John Stafford for a moment. She's still muted. Shirley, I'm, I'm very sorry, Shirley, we can't hear you. Um, let's move on to the next speaker and, and we'll work your, work your problem and we'll try to get you in next. Thank you. All right, do forgive me our, our intrepid uh, chair. I can't hear him, so I am going to ask John Stafford to go ahead. All right, good evening. My name is John Stafford. I'm a candidate for state representative in the 37th Legislative District. John, if you want to check your connections, I'm not hearing you. All right, can you hear me now? We still can't hear you, John. Okay, I am speaking. I am unmuted and my uh, video. I can hear John. Uh, uh, Justin, I can hear John. I do apologize. That was my error. I do apologize to everyone. So should I, uh, uh, is it okay if I just start again then? Yes. Okay, uh, so good evening. My name is John Stafford. I'm a candidate for state representative in the 37th legislative district, position number one. I'm a high school teacher and climate change is the main focus of my civic advocacy. I'm the treasurer for this organization, the Environment and Climate Caucus of the Washington State Democratic Party. I am a steering committee member of the South Seattle Climate Action Network, and I'm also a member of the 37th Legislative District Environment and Climate Caucus. As a candidate for state representative, I have four priorities. First, avoid austerity in the upcoming budget negotiations in Olympia. We confront an $8.8 .8 billion revenue shortfall, and we cannot afford to deal with this by cutting social programs for our most vulnerable. Second, we need to institute a new progressive taxation, new progressive taxation in Washington state. We do have the most regressive tax system in the country and we need new progressive taxation. I support a capital gains tax. Third, we need to meet the demands of racial justice um, by dealing with the underlying societal inequities that give rise to them. And finally, we need to aggressively deal with the imminent threat of climate change here. I support five programs. First, declare a climate emergency in Washington state. Second, pass the Clean Fuels Bill. Third, pass the HEAL Act to ensure a just transition. Fourth, ban the purchase of new internal combustion engine vehicles in the state by 2030. And finally, institute mandatory K-12 climate change curriculum in the schools statewide, patterned off recent momentous legislation passed in New Jersey. I'm highly involved in my community and with the Democratic Party. In addition to my climate change advocacy work, I'm a five-year member of the executive board for the 37 District Democrats. I'm a PCO. I've written 40 articles on policy for the South Seattle Emerald. I consider myself to be substantive, informed, and highly involved. 
I've taken the fossil fuel pledge. I'm endorsed by 350 Seattle uh, and the 37th Legislative District Climate Caucus, as well as other organizations. And I would very much welcome your support. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, Shirley, can you nod if you can hear me? Okay, Shirley, I'm going to send you a message with the phone number and and uh, meeting ID, and I think we're going to need to have you call in on the phone because you're not muted, but we can't hear you. So let's do it by phone. You could even stay on the video there. Okay. If you go down to the to the lower bottom left section, and there's a little uh, up arrow cursor next to mute. If you click that, you can you can click on switch to phone audio, and it will give you a phone number to dial so you can be seen and heard on your phone at the same time. That's pretty slick. Thanks, Justin. Okay. Um, meanwhile, uh, we have a video uh, from Kristen Harris Talley who is running for state representative in the 37th LD. Hello, I'm Kirsten Harris Talley, and I'm a neighbor running for state house position two in the 37th district. Thank you so much. I appreciate all that the Washington Dems Environmental and Climate Caucus does, and really appreciate your consideration of an endorsement of our community campaign. We really are building something unique here. We're building something with our community grassroots up so that we can continue to govern on the other side of this race. And we know that some of the most immediate pieces to address is the climate crisis that we're all experiencing every day. We need to begin to align our values and create policy wins that make sure that we're centering people and the planet over profit. And in Washington State, that means we need to pass the HEAL Act. We need to look at transit infrastructure. We need to talk about housing equity that includes a green standard for building so that affordability isn't just about your rent, but also having zero utilities by using green infrastructure for energy and excess. And we also need to begin to really talk about what corporations need to do to pay their share into cleaning up what has been brought forward by humans and the kind of industries that we've had in this state. We also need to align this movement with our sovereign indigenous neighbors and make sure that everything that we're doing in Washington state also addresses the ability of indigenous people and black and brown people to be part of the solutions. So I'm excited to build this with you and I hope you'll join us in endorsing us along with 350 Seattle, Youth Climate Strike, Sierra Club, Washington conservation voters, and my most humbled and appreciated endorsement from my neighbors right here in the 37th District Environmental and Climate Caucus. Look forward to the conversation. Look forward to doing good work with you. And please check out electkht.org to learn more about our work, how we're doing it, and how to plug in. Thank you again. Bye. Hello. I'm Kristen Harris Talley, and I'm a neighbor running for State House position. Okay, uh, our next speaker is Liz Berry. Liz is running in the 36th LD for the State House. Liz, we're really happy you're here. Please go ahead. Thank you everyone for having me. I'm Liz Berry. I'm running for the State House in the 36th District. It's uh, in Seattle, Queen Ed, Magnolia, Ballard, Inner Bay, Belltown. I'm running to save the planet for my kids. I have a four-year-old son named George and a one-year-old daughter named Eleanor and climate change is a critical issue that we must solve today. COVID-19 has taught us that sweeping societal changes are possible and it has shown us what happens when we ignore science and research. If we react to climate change with the same intensity, we can create a Green New Deal for all Washingtonians. I have worked on this issue at the federal level as um, legislative director to Congresswoman Gabby Giffords in Washington, D.C., and at the local level as a citizen activist. Um, my priorities on this issue are that climate change is an urgent problem that is going to be controversial and it's going to be expensive to solve, and we should not be afraid of that. Um, we need to understand that climate change is killing our salmon and orchids population urgently. Um, transportation is the greatest source of carbon emissions, and we must do something to make transit more affordable and accessible to all people. The legislature must pass a clean fuel standard immediately, 
and we must electrify as much as we can as quickly as possible. And all of this issue needs to be framed around climate justice and equity in my, in my um, belief. Um, and also with the HEAL Act, as Kirsten harris Talley just talked about, I would be to earn the support of this organization along with 350 Seattle Action, the Urbanist, uh, Seattle Subway, The Stranger, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. I am really um, proud of our strong primary showing with over 51% of the vote. And thank you very much for your consideration and all that you all do as activists in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. We really appreciate your being here and thank you for running. Uh, our next speaker is Saren Ranveld. She is uh, also running for position two in the 36th LD. Please go ahead, Sarah, and thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Reineveld, and I'm also running for State House in the 36th Legislative District. I'm a Managing Assistant Attorney General, Working Mom, Community Advocate, and Union Member. And I'm running for State House to make our government work for the people and to tackle our climate crisis. I am committed to working towards a just and equitable recovery from COVID-19, a fair tax system, universal health care, affordable housing, quality public education, and a Green New Deal and bold action on climate. I am running to be a leader on tackling our climate crisis and climate justice in the legislature. I am the environmental justice and climate champion in this race. I have a long history of advocating for environmental justice. I have a bold plan for bringing a Green New Deal to Washington State, finally putting a price on carbon to make polluters pay, ensuring that we're passing a clean fuel standard and a just transition to a clean energy economy. I am committed and have a history of working with tribal nations and communities of color to advance environmental justice. I am proud to be solely endorsed by the Washington Conservation Voters and the Sunrise Movement Seattle and have taken the No Fossil Fuel Pledge. I am the choice of the 36th District Democrats in this race and I have a record of leadership in the Democratic Party. I was a political director of the 36th District Democrats for almost 10 years. I am proud my campaign is solely endorsed by the 36th District Democrats and the King County Democrats and endorsed by leaders such as Earth Day founder, Dennis Hayes, AG Bob Ferguson, who's my boss, State Senator Joe Wen and Beth Dolio. These organizations and individuals support my campaign because they know I will be the environmental champion and act urgently on climate because we can't wait another minute. I would Thank be you. honored to earn the endorsement of the ECC. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and thank you for running. Uh, okay, I think we've got um, our audio uh, uh, problems worked out with Shirley. Uh, Shirley. I'm still seeing a little mute icon there. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much for being flexible. Sometimes you just don't know which way things go. So I'm very happy to be here. Again, I'm Shirley Sutton running for the 32nd State Representative Position 1. As legislator, I will fight to achieve carbon reduction gas goals and include, include, um, sorry, let me talk, I'm kind of rattled by this whole thing. As legislator, I will fight to achieve carbon reduction goals included in Washington 29 CETA, which stands for Climate Energy Transformation Act. I'm inspired by the youth climate movement, the powerful movement by the Black Lives Matter and by the unity of the nation's tribe protecting land and water. I will work with climate activists who call for keeping fossil fuels in the ground and cutting emissions in half by 2030. We cannot pick carbon reductions against human needs. The Green New Deal presents an inclusive roadmap for a just transition and secure future with full employment, living wage, and union jobs. An equitable transition means that everybody moves forward to enjoy a near zero carbon future. Renewable energy, retrofit buildings and electrical rail and public transit. The legislator, legislator must incentivize sustainability. There are so, solid environment bills coming up in the 21, 2021, which I'll support for electric vehicles and phase out gasoline. 
Moving freight by rail instead of trucks would drastically reduce carbon emissions. I will, I will prom, proudly uh, support Indigenous treaty rights, public ownership of energy, utilities, and oppose the LNG plant in Tacoma, which I understand is very, very um, to toxic. So let's together, let's take a bold action in 2021 and get us back on the path of being healthy and loved. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. That was that was a spectacular performance under pressure. Thank you very much for, for being. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, uh, our next speaker from the uh, 36, I'm sorry, the 38th LD uh, is uh, Emily Wicks. Welcome, Emily. Please go ahead. Thank you for having me today. My name is Emily Wicks, and I was appointed in April to serve as the representative for the 38th Legislative District. Marysville, Tulalip, and Everett are the communities that raised me, and I have been fortunate to work across our state on a wealth of issues, such as wastewater and trail projects through my government affairs roles, helping elect environmental champion Governor Jay Ensley, and learning the ins and outs of the legislative process with then state representative Cyrus Habib. I share the privilege of living in a state that values its natural resources and understands that prioritizing our environment is crucial to protecting our health, economy, and future. Having been raised by an immigrant parent and grandparents who survived World War II, the concept of recycling and reusing was an important part of my upbringing. Yet we live in a world of consumerism and a culture of more is better. So it's not enough for us as individuals to recycle, add solar to our home, purchase an electric vehicle, or choose transit and other alternative forms of transportation. We need our government and our business to support environmentally sustainable lifestyles. We need leaders who know that water is finite and necessary to protecting our food sources, our economy, and the health and safety of our workers and families. I am committed to developing solutions that recover salmon runs, assure affordable and reliable clean energy, and invest in low carbon fuel standards that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I will support a transportation package that invests in transit, bicycle and pedestrian options that reduce and prevent sprawl and move us away from congestion and climate pollution. And I will champion development that leverages present infrastructure, works in coordination with convenient transit services, produces affordable housing and corrects restrictive local zoning. I'm working to retain my seat, not because this job is easy or because I'm looking to advance a political career. I do this work because my constituents need leaders who know their community, know that having a thriving economy is contingent on a healthy environment and want to create a place that is better than they found it for generations to come. Thank you for your passion and commitment to supporting our shared values, the work you are doing to coordinate this event during pressing times and the opportunity to earn your endorsement. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Um, our next speaker is Klaus Jones, and he is from the 39th LD running for State House position one. Good evening. This is Klaus Jones. I'm running for 39 LD House position one. I'm speaking to you tonight from the traditional lands of the Sauk Seattle tribe and Upper Skagit tribe. I like them to thank them for the thousand years of culture dedicated to environmental sustainability and responsibility. Thank you to the Environmental and Climate Caucus for considering endorsing our campaign. My four action items if elected are to do a state public bank. When we fully funded education, we pulled 400 million out of the state public's work trust. We can put a lot of the people that are unemployed today back to work by simply passing this legislation that Bob Hasegawa introduced in the Senate last year. I support a residential skilled trade housing apprenticeship where we can start not just finding the money to build affordable housing, which the state public bank will do, but we can actually generate the manpower over two years to do that. I plan on removing four dams from the Snake River and replacing it with green energy on the local level near each dam site. And I support a Washington State EPA. I wanna be very clear. I completely support the Washington State Department of Ecology. They have done nothing wrong. However, in the last four years, the Trump administration has reversed almost 100 environmental laws. 
we need to have somebody dedicated to making certain that impact does not hit Washington state as it will the rest of the country as they spend years trying to reverse the damage that's been done. Thank you very much for considering our endorsement and I can see the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you for running. We really appreciate you being here. Our next speaker is Catherine Lewandowski, uh, running for state senator in the 39th LD. Thank you for being here, Catherine. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm uh, a nurse for 30 plus years, um, and I'm running for this office because we need people representing uh, progressive ideas in every area of our government, especially in the 39th LD. From Medicare for All, getting money out of politics to enact, enacting policies at the state level that will lead us to riches of the Green New Deal and many more. All these issues are important, but every issue we face is all for naught if our planet is uninhabitable by our, for our children. Our government needs fundamental change. Large corporations have dominated the attention of our government leaders who in response have neglected their constituents' needs. We need representatives in our government who are free to make the difficult decisions and who recognize that they are ultimately responsible to the citizens they represent. We must address the needs of our planet in order to guarantee a healthy planet for future generations. This will require hard choices that will not be popular, but we have no choice. We must move away from the fossil fuels as a means of energy production, and we must do it now. We have no option of postponing any longer. Like it or not, we are the caretakers of the earth and we have been negligent by allowing a few corporations to inflict irreparable damage to our ecosystems. This cannot be allowed to continue. The fossil fuel industry wants to keep our head in the sand and their hands in our wallets, but there are so many opportunities available that will help us to achieve green renewable energy sources and that will also provide good paying jobs to our people who really need secure jobs right now. Jobs will take that, that will take them into a green new future. The decisions we have to make will not be popular and they will not be the least expensive. Maybe if we had made these decisions decades ago, we could have absorbed and reduced the cost to our economy while saving our environment, but we didn't. And so we need to be electing representatives who will stick their neck out and fight for the right decision, not the decision that most protects and rewards their corporate donors. Decisions that move us forward in achieving all aspects of a Green New Deal. And I kindly ask you for your endorsement. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for being here and thank you for running. Uh, next, we have Alex Rammel. Alex is running for uh, position two in the State House in the 40th LD. Welcome, Alex. Uh, please go ahead. Great. Thank you. Uh, um, again, my name is Alex Rammel, um, and I was appointed to represent um, uh, the 40th District in January of this year. Uh, prior to joining the state legislature, I've worked my entire career as an advocate for climate justice. My first job out of college um, was helping local governments, cities and counties implement greenhouse gas reduction programs. Um, following that, I went on to found the Community Energy Challenge, a four county wide program up here in Northwest Washington that has helped um, more than 2000 homeowners, more than 500 businesses implement energy efficiency strategies. And we did that while putting uh, dozens of people to work at prevailing wages. More recently, um, I've worked alongside tribes and frontline communities to try and stop dirty energy projects, things like um, coal export facilities and oil train terminals. When I got to the state legislature, uh, the first bill that I introduced uh, and passed was uh, to create a scenic bikeways program here in Washington state. And my first floor speech uh, was in favor of low carbon fuel standard. Um, I'm now representing the House Democratic um, Caucus on our state's 2021 energy strategy, and I'm eager to carry that work forward into the future, uh, making Washington state an example of uh, progressive innovative climate justice. Really appreciate the work all of you are doing to elevate this important issue in our caucus and in our party. And I'd be honored to have your support. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, our next speaker is Danielle Cohen speaking for Lisa Welvin's campaign. Lisa is running for Senator in the 41st LD. Hello, Danielle, go ahead. Thank you, Steve. I'm here speaking tonight on behalf of Senator Lisa Wellman, uh, who's running for her first reelection since she came to the Senate in 2016. 
Before that time, the senator had a long career in business, one of those roles being the head of a consulting firm who worked with companies on how to mitigate their carbon footprints, which she feels really passionately about addressing on the side of corporations. Since coming to the legislature, Senator Wellman has been the chair of the Early Learning and K-12 Education Committee, has sat on the Labor and Commerce Committee, and also on the Environment, Energy, and Technology Committee, uh, where she has been a supporter of green energy legislation. I can tell you that in her hopeful next term, uh, in this space, the senator looks forward to working with cities and localities on how they dispose of waste and the way that that interacts with energy usage. Today, one of Senator Wellman's main focus areas is on her bill, which passed previously, that recreated the Washington Broadband Office, bringing connectivity to every corner of the state. Um, of course, this project really came to the forefront and became sped up with the pandemic and the necessity for so many employees and every student around the state to have working connectivity at home. Um, what's been a really interesting outcome of this, one that we might not have engaged with otherwise, is the way that this has allowed us to reimagine commuting and cities. And um, we have seen the effects of this already on greenhouse gases, not only on the state level, uh, but on the national and global level as well. And coming out of the pandemic, Senator Wellman looks forward to the work that we can do to continue and expand these trends. Climate action is one of Senator Wellman's priorities and she is so thankful for the work that you do and for your consideration. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, our next speaker is with us by video. Alicia Rule is running for the State House in the 42nd LD. Hi, my name is Alicia Rule, and I'm running to State Representative in the 42nd District. I'm currently serving on the Blaine City Council, and I'm a lifelong social worker. My children make up the fifth generation in my family to live, work, and play in Whatcom County. I'm running for office because I care deeply about my district and about our state. I'm invested in leaving a legacy of closely connected community that doesn't leave anyone behind and that prioritizes the caring for and preservation of our land, air, and water. I'm passionate about passing on the love and preservation of the same natural spaces I enjoyed as a child to our children and our grandchildren. I'm very proud of some of the progress we've made in Blaine. I came onto a very conservative city council and within one year led them into agreeing to green practices as being a priority item in our strategic plan. The council as a whole agreed to consider environmental impact as a practice in each and every decision we make. In a small city, this is especially significant. I am proud to have led the charge of economic development by leading the way to redevelopment in our downtown. By focusing on mixed use in our downtown core, we have increased much needed housing and built a, a walking center downtown, which reduces the fossil fuel usage, of course, in town in Blaine, but also by driving to Bellingham. It's still in the beginning stages, but the plans are now written and laid in a way that this city can be built and grown responsibly. I fought hard to save the old growth trees in Scalman Park, and I worked really closely with community members the Department of Ecology in the Port of Bellingham and cleaning up some legacy pollution in our local harbor. As a lifelong social worker, my priority has always been and will be to be a voice for the vulnerable and the marginalized. We know, of course, that climate change impacts those communities first, and I look forward to working on these intersections in Olympia. Lastly, I want you to know how important your support is for this race. It's surely going to be a close one, and our campaign has pledged not to take any fossil fuel money. While the fossil fuel industry has made max donations to my opponent in every single one of her campaigns, including this one, your support will make a significant difference in having a voice for our environment in the 42nd District and the entire state of Washington, and I thank you very much for it. Great. Great. Um, our next speaker is Frank Chop. Frank is in the 43rd LD running for position two in the state legislature. Thank you for being with us, Frank. Please go ahead. I'm Representative Frank Chop. The climate crisis is the biggest challenge that we face. I'm working hard to help create a just transition away from fossil fuels towards social and environmental justice for all. I've created many social service and housing programs to benefit working people, communities of color, 
homeless folks and people with disabilities. Climate change falls hardest on those marginalized community. I'm working hard on the climate agenda to eliminate carbon emissions and create a fairer economy for us all. For example, I passed the 100% clean electricity mandate, which puts our state on the fastest path to decarbonize electricity in the nation. I did that through a green power, blue collar coalition that brought together environmentalists, labor unions, and frontline communities. To support massive investments in public transit, I helped authorize Sound Transit 3, reinstated car tab ta taxes twice, and I will fight to overturn Initiative 976. Working with Beth Dolio, I helped enact the Washington Clean Buildings Act. Working with Joe Fitzgibbon, I pushed the clean fuel standard through the House, but it didn't pass the Senate. I support Representative Macri's legislation to phase out gas vehicles. In transit-oriented development, I have created thousands of affordable, nonprofit rent-controlled homes. For example, I recently transferred a $20 million state property for free to Seattle, and soon there will be 450 apartments right next to the Mount Baker Light Rail Station. I will fight for public financing for renters and homeowners to electrify home heating and for funding of local Green New Deal programs that cut carbon and create thousands of union jobs. You can see my full climate agenda as well as endorsements from the Sierra Club, the Washington Conservation Voters, and many others at my website, frankchop.com. If you'd like to discuss any issue, please call my cell phone. It's 206-612-7071. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us, Representative Chop. Our next speaker is with us by video. April Berg is running for State House position two in the 44th LD. Take it away, April. Hi, I'm April Berg. I really wish I could be there with you tonight in person. As you can see, it's been a rough couple weeks. I'm wearing a back brace, using a walker because of an accident I had on primary night. But I do wanna tell you a little bit about myself and why your caucus should support me. I'm a mom on the school board. I serve on the Everett School Board and I'm a former member of the Edmond School Board. I'm also a planning commissioner for the city of Mill Creek and I'm a trustee for Seattle Children's Theater. Let me tell you, when this pandemic first started, my daughter's high school was the first high school in the nation to have a COVID positive student. This made me a leader at the forefront of a national crisis. I began with asking questions of the folks I serve. What are your needs? What kind of food security needs do you have? What kind of technology needs do you have? And what kind of childcare needs do you have? Because I asked those questions, we were able to serve over 200,000 meals, thousands of laptops and uh, hotspots, as well as emergency childcare for first responders, as well as frontline workers. That's the kind of advocacy I wanna bring to Olympia. I'm also a former small business owner and a former aerospace employee. I know what it means to pay the bills um, in a business and also to balance the books. And I know the importance of aerospace to our economy. As you can see, my life experience represents the 44th district, a commitment to community, a believer in great public schools, a understanding of small business and aerospace, and an understanding of municipal laws and codes. I am hoping to have your support as I move forward in this race and thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your night. Hi, I'm April. I really wish I could be there with you tonight in person. That was uh, April Berg in the 44th. Uh, our next speaker is running to be a member of the Clark County Charter Review Board, Thomas Hernandez. Thomas, please go ahead. Hello all, uh, my name is Thomas Hernandez and I'm running for the Clark County Charter Review uh, District 4 position one. I am a Gen Zer who is 21 years old and a first time candidate. What we need to do right now is to take serious action on climate change. My be like in the future. To start taking action now, I have signed the No Fossil Fuel Money Pledge and I will go further than the pledge's wording by not taking any contributions from the oil, gas, and coal industry executives, lobbyists, or PACs because I will fight for the people. I am funded by small dollar donations only. If elected, I will put in barriers to prevent Clark County government officials, whether they be elected or appointed, from taking money from big corporations so that they will be able to meet the 
people's needs and fight for a better future. We need to get rid of all corruption in government so that our government can work for the people. I would be honored to have your endorsement. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you for running. Um, our next speaker, and um, on the schedule, we only have one more after this. Our next speaker is running for Clark County Councilor out of District 3, Jesse James. Welcome, Jesse. Please go ahead. I thank you for having me here today. Uh, as you said, I'm running for Clark County Council District 3. Uh, climate change is something that's very important to me. Um, I sailed as a merchant mariner throughout the uh, throughout the world and I saw the effects uh, that uh, pollution has done to our environment and after becoming a father um, the the effects of climate change are very worrisome it's a it's an existential threat to humanity and we're watching the Trump administration move backwards and our counties and our uh, cities need to make up for that um, until we can get power back on a federal level. Our states also, of course. Um, there are many things we can do in Clark County. Is we need to control our uh, urban sprawl. We can change building codes to make sure our county is electrified 100% and stop fossil fuels um, expansion. My opponent is, a, is, is an avid Trump supporter. If she is to, to win this election, we are going to go backwards in our county, just like we are on the federal level. We can't afford that. I'm hoping to get your endorsement so we can help win this election and move Cal Clark County forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse James. Um, our final speaker on the program is uh, Jamie Smith from the 25th LD. Thank you for being here, Jamie, go ahead. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. I do apologize for missing my spot earlier. Um, I am a public school teacher and today was the first day um, in 17 years of teaching and it was definitely unique, um, but I'm definitely happy to be here. And I've been, as I said, in education for 17 years. I have been a union representative for my district for the 14 years that I have been there. And I am just so grateful for the Environmental and Climate Caucus and for Washington State for leading the way, but there's so much more that we have to do. We have seen with COVID that we have the opportunity to change what we've been doing. We have the opportunity to turn that corner and to make things better, but that opportunity is significantly shrinking and we have to do that quickly. My um, top goals when I'm going into the legislation is one is to work on more trades in schools. Being a high school teacher, that's really big to get our kids more opportunities, but also to, those trades need to be also looking into retooling people and giving them the job opportunities and clean energy. The future is clean energy. The future is going to more energy that is sustainable, that are good jobs, that will uh, pay people to be able to support their families, but will help our environment and save our lives in the long run. It's also looking at transportation. Pierce County is the fastest growing county um, in the state and in the nation pretty much. And 50% of the people in the county work outside the county, which means we keep adding more cars to the road and this is unsustainable. We cannot just keep adding more lanes. We have to have more public transportation and we have to have more clean jobs in our area so we don't have to be traveling in the first place. We also need to look more into healthcare. We know that healthcare is, um, is not equitable across the, the State. We know it's not equitable across different groups. We know that communities of color have less access and they're more likely to be in more polluted areas. And so we have to make sure that we're cleaning up these areas because it is literally people's health and their lives that are at risk. We know that leadership matters. COVID has shown us that more than ever. My opponent is taking money from fossil fuels. She is a huge Trump supporter, and we have to get that out because they're calling to roll back our policies, to roll back our environmental protections that we have worked so hard to get. And now is not the time to roll those back. Now is the time to push those forward as we keep going. And so we need to have a clean energy. We need to have a Green New Deal. We need to have a sustainable economy because we've seen what our environment can look 
look like with just a little bit of help when people stop polluting as much during COVID. Just imagine what happens when we actually start using clean energy and using the resources that we have now. So thank you for all you're doing. And I can't wait to get down into the legislature to be able to support and make Washington the leaders in not only the nation, but in the world in clean energy and in protecting our environment. Thank you, Jamie. We really appreciate you being here and good luck with the online school. I'm a teacher myself. Uh, that was our last speaker. Uh, Adrienne Moore uh, was not able to join us tonight. Otherwise, every other candidate or representative made it. And I got to tell you, it was really fun watching all of these presentations. I want to vote for each and every one of you twice. Um, so uh, members, um, watch your email. Your ballots are going to be arriving sometime before the 8th of September. Um, turn them right around, you'll have a week. Uh, but uh, please turn your ballots around as quickly as possible and get them back to us. All of the information that is available about these candidates um, uh, from us will be in your ballot package and in this YouTube video. And of course, it's easy to find more information about all of these candidates um, with an online search. They all have web pages, Facebook pages, and so forth. So, um, well, Chair Stephen, this is Justin. I just want to also uh, make okay, sure to rem remind the members that in the in the uh, message that went out about this meeting, there was a link to a document I put together that combined all of the candidates' questionnaires, answers and all of their links. So if you go back to that most recent meeting email and look for the, 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 the link to the 43 candidates, you will see all of their questionnaire answers and their campaign links. Okay, thank you, Justin. Um, okay, no, good night. So uh, we are um, at the point in our agenda where um, we will begin to consider any new business that anybody might have. And hearing none, um, let's move on to for the good of the order. Um, uh, if you have uh, an announcement that you'd like to make, please raise your hand and um, we'll hear what you've got. Chat is open, raise hands, go to the order. Yeah, we're all a little wrung out. This has been a great evening, but um, it also, uh, took a lot of attention. So uh, watch your email for our next meeting. Um, join the conversation at our Facebook page. And- um, Fern and Holly, Fern and Holly have something they want to say. Yeah, we do have two, uh, Karen and then Holly. Uh, okay, very good. I keep clicking back and forth between screens. So I'm sorry I missed that. Sharon, go ahead. Okay, well, I just wanted to say that I've been trying to see if I could get a, a labor caucus meeting going next week. And um, it's, uh, I, I just want to uh, put it out there that, um, that um, because some of our board members are also on the board of the labor caucus, if maybe we could have a, a little chat about what's happening with the labor caucus and if we might schedule something uh, for during this uh, State Democrat Central Committee meeting, period. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Holly, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for letting us present at the beginning of this very important meeting and um, take your time and to let you know, I'm sorry about the presentation. I did post in the chat uh, where you can link to that and I've sent it to Justin and, and to you. Um, Steve, so you, you can um, put that on your website as well. Um, and I'll include that in our, uh, in our next newsletter as well. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, and um, with that, if no one else has anything else, what a great meeting, what a fantastic job. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who was involved in um, managing that Present that series of presentations, Arvia Morris, Ann Udeloy, Martin Cheney, and of course, uh, would not have been possible without Justin Baird. Yeah, jazz hands. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>